diseases and earthquakes, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, and then shall the end come. Here's today's Prophecy Update. Do you believe that Muslims, Jews, and Christians all worship the same God? Do you believe there are many ways to get to heaven or only one way? Do you know what the Bible says about this important question? We'll answer this critical question on today's edition of End of the Age. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there are questions in life that sometimes we don't grapple with, but they're the most important questions. I'll never forget in school, we had a young teacher just out of college. I think I was maybe in the junior level of high school at the time. And when he walked into the class, he said, students, here's the way it is. The only thing you can know for sure is that there's nothing you can know for sure. Now, this is our teacher who's supposed to be teaching us true things. I couldn't let it slide. My hand shot in the air and I said, well, I called him by his name, Mr. So-and-so. I said, if the only thing we can know for sure is that there's nothing we can know for sure, then how do we know for sure there's nothing we can know for sure? Well, immediately he saw that I was very opposed to what he was saying. Uh, and of course, the Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Anyway, it made for an interesting semester. It was supposed to be an English class, uh, a literature class. Nevertheless, that was the way we started off because he had been indoctrinated that the only thing you can know for sure, that there's nothing you can know for sure. However, what is the truth? Now, the reason I'm broaching this question to you today is because this teaching is now rampant in our society and in our world. This particular article caught my eye today. Belief Jesus is only way to heaven is insanity. Mega church pastor Michael Waldrund says. This article appeared in the Christian Post just two days ago on March the 12th. And I want you to hear some of this. Michael Waldron, one of New York City's most influential pastors who leads the more than 10,000 member First Corinthian Baptist Church in Harlem, is coming under fire online for telling his congregants that the belief that Jesus is the only way to heaven is insanity. Think about that. It's insanity to believe that way. This pastor of 10,000 people is teaching his congregants. He goes on to say, there was a time when you would see people in the pulpit say, well, if you don't believe in Jesus, you are going to hell. That's insanity in many ways because that is not what Jesus even believes. And so the key is you believe in God and whatever your path is to God, I celebrate that. Personally, I celebrate that, he said, to a smattering of applause. Again, we have enough in this world that divides us. We need to find those things that bring us together. And... If God cannot bring us closer together, then something is wrong. Not with God, but in how we think we know God and understand God. Waldron serves as a trustee. Now get this. This is not a, just a normal guy here. Waldron serves as a trustee and adjunct faculty member of Chicago Theological Seminary and chairs the Board of Visitors at Duke University Divinity School. Ken Stone, academic dean at Chicago Theological Seminary, said Reverend Walrun's openness to the truth and wisdom found in multiple religious traditions 
And his celebration of multiple paths to God is something the institution supports. I don't know that we would use exactly the same language to describe it, but in terms of the openness to truth and wisdom found in multiple religious traditions, absolutely we would support that, Stone said. Institutionally, we do celebrate multiple paths to God and to God's wisdom and truth, and that's what I understand also to be Reverend Walren's position, he said. He noted that the seminary is open to all students and faculty regardless of faith. In other words, regardless of what they believe. There are evangelicals and Muslims studying at the seminary and even students who subscribe to no particular faith at all. Part of our scholarship does deal with dogma, but the students who come here and the faculty that teach here are not asked to adopt a single religious perspective. Is this true? We'll talk about it. Now I have to tell you that this article somewhat shocked me to actually come face to face with uh, the statement that to believe there's only one way to heaven and only one way to God is insanity. That's what Waldron had to say. And to hear him say it so loudly and to believe that he has 10,000 followers and goes under the name of Baptist. Now, I'm positive that not all Baptists believe this way. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're not. But there's a lot of people who are believing this way. Now, I want to finish the article so you can catch the gist of the entire thing. But I just read a little bit of it, of the, this statement, but I want to go back. Part of our scholarship does deal with dogma, but the students who come here and the faculty that teach, let me see if I can have this exactly right, uh, here are not asked to adopt a single religious perspective. They're asked to understand multiple religious perspectives and on the basis of their in engagement with multiple religious perspectives to be able to articulate their own views, Stone said. Religious diversity is a harm, hallmark of our school. We're very proud of it. We think that's the future of theological education. In other words, our university, our theological university, is designed to crank people out that don't know what they believe for sure. They can just pick and choose, and whatever feels good, that's what they do. He went on to conclude, and we are very proud to be associated with Reverend Waldron. Okay. Now, this is a really important question because Jesus Christ was diametrically opposed to what this man in New York believes. I mean, let me give you an example. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but my, by me. What's he saying? You can't get to God except through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm not one of the ways, one path of truth, one form of life. No, I am the only way, the truth, the life. It was the one thing that sort of exposed me to this line of thinking was I had a video clip of uh, former president George W. Bush. He was being interviewed and the interviewer asked him, uh, President Bush, do you believe that Muslims, Jews, and Christians all worship the same God? I immediately was riveted. I wanted to know what our president had to say. He said, uh, yes, I do. I believe we call him different names, but he's the same God. And then the interviewer said, so then do you believe that Muslims, Jews, and Christians all go to heaven? And President Bush said, yes, I do. There's different ways of getting there, but we're all going to heaven. Now, here's a man who sat in our White House. And yet, 
and claim to be a Christian, but I don't think he's ever read his Bible because the Bible contradicts this over and over and over and over and over. Let me give you some examples. In Acts, well, let's go to John 8, 24 first. Jesus speaking, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Except you believe I'm the Messiah, you'll die in your sins. Now, I'm not here to trash people or other religions, except to say, Jesus claimed if you don't believe he's the Messiah, you're going to end up dying in your sins. Well, I love the Jewish people. All of you know that. I go to Israel twice every year. I have a college in Jerusalem. I love the Jewish people. I believe that they're God's chosen people according to the flesh. At the same time, though, I can't say to Jesus, look, you must have been wrong here. So are we, are, is he telling us that Jews have to believe Jesus is the Messiah in order to be saved? Let me read it again. Jesus speaking, if you believe not, that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Now, ladies and gentlemen, have we gotten so exalted that we think we're smarter than God? Do we think we're smarter than the Bible? That's getting pretty self-important. Let's read another scripture. Acts 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name, speaking of the name of Jesus, there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I know when President Obama was elected and he had three inaugural services before he took office. At the first inauguration, he had Muslims and Jews to pray. At the second inauguration, he had an open homosexual bishop of the Episcopalian Church, Eugene Robinson, to pray. At the third inauguration service, he had evangelical Rick Warren to pray. And I knew immediately what President Obama was trying to do. He was sending a message, all religions are equally valid. Muslim, Jew, Christian, Buddhist, Zoroastrian, whatever you choose to believe, it's still a pathway to God. So we're not talking about some kind of an isolated ideology here. We're talking about a belief system that now has captured the minds of kings and presidents. So they're all sort of getting to the point where the only thing you can know for sure is that there's nothing you can know for sure. And yet Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. What kind of a foggy world would we live in if there's no such thing as truth? I mean, what if somebody says, what's one plus one? And you say, of course, two. And they say, how do you know? So now everything is relative. Uh, what's right? What's wrong? Is adultery right or wrong? How do we even know whether murder is right or wrong? And if murder is wrong, how old does a baby have to be before it qualifies for being murdered? I mean, after a while, there's no limit. And marriage, oh yeah, two men could marry, two women could marry. I read an article today where a woman married her son. And then after that, she married her daughter. Now they're taking her to jail for marrying her daughter. I guess they thought it was worse for her to marry her daughter than to marry her son. But can you see that if there's no such thing as truth, you ultimately descend into chaos. Now, I have to tell you that this is being taught at the highest levels. There's a movement out there called Chrislam. Some Christian churches now then take one Sunday a month to preach out of the Koran rather than out of the Bible. And yet, do Muslims believe Jesus was God? Oh no, they vehemently deny it. Cannot be. Do they believe Jesus was Messiah? Absolutely not. Yet Jesus said, except you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Now, am I trying to stir up controversy? No, I'm not. I am trying, however, to defend the truth. 
because without truth, we descend into delusion. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, singular, and the truth shall make you free. Let me give you another scripture. This is in John chapter 10, verse number one. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. And then he went on, this is John 10, one, on down to verse seven, he said, then said Jesus unto them again, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. So anybody else that came along proclaiming to be the way of salvation, Jesus said, they're thieves and they're robbers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are living in such a day when nobody knows anything for sure that everybody's sort of throwing up their hands and saying, you know, 25% of the students in California's public school system now do not claim to be either male or female. Now that's where you get when you leave the Bible. When we outlaw the Bible from our schools but bring in all kinds of other sick philosophies, you're in a society that's destined to disintegrate and go into chaos and decay. That's where we are right now. I mean, after all, when you talk about two men being able to marry, now, a first grader should know better. But who defined marriage in the beginning? There's one source. The Bible defined marriage. Way back in the book of Genesis, the word, it's the first book in the Bible, and the word Genesis means beginnings. And back in the book of Genesis, God made them male and female and said it is good. And said, for this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife and they will become one flesh. So God ordained male and female and said, that's good. The devil said, oh, it's good, is it? Well, guess what? I'm against it. So... He began to tempt the world with same-sex marriage, homosexuality, and God hated it. In Leviticus chapter number uh, 20, verse number 13, it says, If a man lie with mankind as with womankind, it is an abomination. Strong words. And both of them shall be put to death. Under the Old Testament law, it was such a horrendous sin that God said, I'm going to put them all to death. Now, in the New Testament, there's not a death sentence, and we're thankful there's not, because there was also a death sentence on adultery. There's a death sentence on many different things that a person could do. So we live under a grace dispensation, not a promiscuous dispensation. You see, some people take the grace of God and turn it into lasciviousness. It says that in the book of Jude. Just because we have access to grace, it should not give us a license to live lascivious lifestyles. So can you know the truth? Let me give you another scripture. In John chapter number three, Nicodemus, who was a religious ruler in Israel, but he was attracted to Jesus. He came to Jesus by night and he said to him, Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, no, the first thing he said to him was, Good master, we know thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do the works that you do except God be with him. And immediately Jesus said, Nicodemus, verily, verily, I say unto you, you must be born again or you cannot see the kingdom of God. Wow, all of a sudden, here is this religious ruler in Israel, a very religious nation, but he's hit with a term he doesn't even understand. Born again, never heard of it. So here was his follow-up question. Well, Jesus, can a man enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, no, no, no. 
You're talking about a fleshly birth. I'm talking about a spiritual birth. Except a man be born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So Jesus there in John chapter 3 coined the term born again because that was going to be his plan of salvation. And except a person is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So do Muslims teach you must be born again? No. Do Jews teach you must be born again? No. Do Buddhists? No. Do Zoroastrians? No. So when Jesus said you must be born again or you cannot enter the kingdom of God, was Jesus wrong? Was Jesus bigoted? Was he narrow-minded? Was he guilty of religious exclusiveness? Now, I know that the whole religious trend in our world today is going the other way. But you and I don't want to go that way because Jesus is not going that way. Jesus came to say, there's one door, there's one sheepfold, and the only way, and I'm the door to the sheepfold, and the only way to get in the sheepfold, God's sheepfold, is by way of the door. So it's critical for us. Now, are we here to try to condemn everybody? No, we're here to show people the light. But there is no salvation through Islam. There's no salvation through people who do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the only hope. He's the hope of the world. I'm the door to the sheepfold. Any man that climbs up any other way, the same as a thief and a robber. No man comes to the Father except by me. No man comes to me except the Spirit draws him. So you can't get to God outside of Jesus Christ. That's the reason his name is Jesus. The word Jesus, Yeshua, is salvation. You have to go through the door of salvation to get to God. And the way you do that is by being born again. That's what Jesus said a person must do to be saved. I've had a lot of people try to get me to say to them, no, you don't really have to be born again to be saved. And I've never been willing to tell them that because I don't have the authority. Now, I would be fine with it if God saved everyone. That's his prerogative, but he's not going to because he said, except a person is born again, of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, if I tell you anything less than that, I'm going to be lying to you. I'm going to be contradicting the words of Jesus Christ. Now, to me, that's a fearful thing to do. I don't have any right to negate the teachings of Jesus Christ. I'm called of God to preach the gospel and so God's going to hold me responsible. If I don't tell you the truth, not only will you not be saved, but I won't be saved either. On Monday, Mahmoud Abbas of the Palestinians was with King Abdullah of Jordan. That was Monday, two days ago. And King Abdullah was urging him to return to the peace talks under President Trump. On Tuesday... There were many Arab leaders at the White House. Let me give you some example of those. There was something like 19 world leaders, including, let me see if I can give you some of the names. Uh, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Bahrain, Oman, and the United Arab Emirates were there as long as, it, as along with Israeli officials. It's unheard of. Israeli officials together with all these Arab rulers they have no diplomatic relations. They have not been willing to sit down at the table with the Israelis ever since the nation of Israel was founded. But now, here they are. So, over in Jordan, King Abdullah of Jordan is meeting with Mahmoud Abbas, the head of the Palestinians, who said, I'm not talking to Trump. I'm not interested in his peace plan. But now, Abdullah is saying, look, look at all the Ar these Arabs that are meeting with Israeli officials now. Times are changing. You're going to get left behind. You better get with the program. That happened on Monday. On Tuesday, Trump is meeting with 19 world leaders about Gaza and also about 
the peace plan, which they say they're getting ready to release. It sounds like Abbas is being softened up by his fellow Arabs talking to him. Cannot tell you exactly what's going to happen when, but as you know, when that peace agreement is signed, and it's going to be, it will mark the beginning of the final seven years to the Battle of Armageddon. Just want you to know, the wheels are still moving, so don't go to sleep 